enums. The enum type in Solidity can be used when we are faced with a situation where we need better defined or more descriptive choices. Enum is short for enumeration and essentially it's a data type that allows us to define named constants. Let's go ahead and define an enum. Start by writing enum like this and then give it a name. In our case, I'm going to call this pizza size. Then brackets and now we can specify the different pizza sizes. For example, we can have small and then a medium and a large. Let's reformat this so it makes a bit more sense and that I can add some comments to explain what the values are behind the enum itself. Now small, medium and large are the actual named constants but behind the scenes because an enum is zero indexed small would be zero and medium would be one and then of course large would be two. As you can see, even though we can refer to this as pizza size, small, medium and large, behind the scenes it's just a number. And this is okay and you might ask why do we need enums at all? Can't we just say that I want a pizza zero, size one and size two? Well, in coding that makes no difference but to us, writing the code it's way more readable to make use of enums like this. Let me show you a function example. Let's say we have a pizza shop and we are going to define a variable right now. Now because we have defined the enum we can actually use this enum as a type. So we're going to say this is going to be type of pizza size and we're going to give it a name as well but we will make this public and this is going to be the current pizza being made. So we'll give it this huge name current pizza size being made. All right. Now this is like any other variable and it will be public. So if we deploy the contract, then you should see it over here. Current pizza being made is now on zero. And that's because the default value of the enum would be the first one, which is the zero index. Okay, so now let's go ahead and write a function. This function we're going to say make pizza. So we're going to say make pizza. And we're going to require someone who's ordering this pizza to give us the size. Now they can't just specify any size. We want to at least have them only select one of our enumerables. So we can say this should be type of pizza size. And we're just simply going to give it the name and refer to it as size. Our function will be public but not view. And the reason is we are going to change a state variable. So what we want to do is we want to actually set our current pizza size equal to the size, the one that the user is going to pass in. Now let's make this interesting and create another function. This function I'm going to call maybe cooking time. How long is this pizza going to cook for, right? So this one we are going to make public and view because it's going to view the state variable or whatever we tell it to view. And the function is also going to return a string. So we're going to return a string memory. And now we're going to do some if checks. We have a video on if and else statements coming up. For now, just follow along. I'm going to say if something, then do something else. And my if check is going to say if the current pizza being made is equal now realize I'm using a double equal sign. This is a comparison operator. So we are going to say if this is equal currently as pizza size dot small. If this is the case, then we'll do something. We'll specify the thing to do in another set of curly brackets. And what we want to do is return a string. The string that I'm going to return is just simply going to say 10 minutes. And that's it. But now you see there's a warning. And this is because our function states that it needs to return a string. But what if this if condition is never met? Then nothing is returned. So here at the bottom we're going to return something as a last resort. We'll simply return an empty string. And that should fix it. Now I want an if condition for each size. So small, then medium, and then large. And then we'll also increase the time by 20 and 30 minutes. 
Now our function is complete and we can go ahead and test it. Let's clear the console, delete our smart contract and deploy our new one. Here we go and here's all the functions. Let's check the current pizza size and it is still zero. Interestingly, if we now click on cooking time, we can see it's 10 minutes because it knows that zero over here is the small pizza. So it returns to us this and it is zero because it takes the default, the first value. So maybe we can put some if checks if a pizza is even being made. However, let's go and tell this program that we want a large pizza. So in the make pizza function, we are going to pass two because we know that two is the enumerated value for large. Now we're going to say make pizza and it was successful. So if we check the current pizza, it is now two and the cooking time is 30 minutes. What's also useful is if we try and add a value that is not in our enumerable set, like 10. If we say make pizza, it will fail because there's no 10 value over here. But regardless, you can now see how useful enums can be because our code is way more readable. We can see that we are trying to make small, medium and large pizzas. And if we had a front-end application, we could use the same enum set. And then when we say make a pizza, we could simply use small, medium and large too. However, this is enums.